Hey, yo, it's a girl. I'm gonna be checking out a game called Beacon Pines. Uh, it fits to the horror category. It, I mean, it prides itself in being creepy, so yes. Here we go. Dear reader, allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter 1. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. Van Horn? Is it because he has horns? Like, cute though. What a cute little game. How do I play this? Okay. Oh, he's like a little deer thing. Hey, Dad. Oh, this is sad already. How are things going? Today is the first day of summer vacation. I start middle school next year, I guess. Hey, RIP, though. I was six years old when you died. And it's been six years now. He's 12. From here on out, you have been gone longer than you were here. It feels like that should mean something. Mom always said that this tree was your favorite spot in the world. Me too. Oh shoot, he's crying. See, now I feel bad for making jokes. Hey, Luca. It's a tiger? I knew I'd find you here. Rolo was Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. Oops. Or after I banged on your door to you to your grand answered. And after I checked the pond and climbed up to the tree house. Then I knew I'd find you here. Rolo finally noticed the tears welling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. Oh yeah, right. You and mom always did this on your dad's birthday. Yeah. I didn't know if you were going to keep doing it now that your mom's gone too. Bruh, what? What is this? She's not gone. She's just missing. Sorry, I meant to say since she went missing. She's gonna come back, Rolo. Of course she is. Okay, Dad, see you next time. This guy just has some bad luck. I think I'm ready to get out of here. Sure, I'll lead the way. His friend kinda sucks. Yeah. That's cute. Tickle. Huh. Okay. Uh, what is this? Wonderful! I had a good feeling about mm. you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Oh, okay. So if I keep running through these things, the little um, reindeer thing sneezes. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. The whole reason I was looking for you. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. I found the perfect way to start our summer. How's that? Rolo looked to the side suspiciously. Not here. They might be watching. They? Who? Shh, not so loud. We need to do this in a secure location. Mission control. All right, I just have to tell Gran and then we can head out. What are you gonna tell her? I don't know, I'll think of something. If it's all the same to you, I'll meet you at the welcome sign. Yeah, Grand still kind of wigs me out. I don't do well with new people. She moved in like half a year ago. Just meet me at the sign when you're done. Suit yourself, I won't be long. Tell Grand before heading out with Rolo. I'm gonna assume she's like a little reindeer thing too. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion pat? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. 
They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Ah, okay. Some of them can be found in this very house. I guess I gotta find it. Well, can I run? No. Gran had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. No charm there. Okay. Oh. No, oh, easy. Thunder. Bro, this little creature doesn't look like 12. It's like a. Oh. Just some dusty knickknacks. She's not in here. An array of prepared meals crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. That's me. She's a prep. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. Junk. Oh, I'm just collecting stuff. Can I cut it off? Nope. All right. Committed. The only piece of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. Can I elaborate? Nope. Can I cut the sink off? Okay. So this is the bad door. Oh my! Garden. This is quite exciting. I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. Mm. You recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me. I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. Okay. A sturdy old wheelbarrow. What is she like? I don't know what these people are. A beginner's Deers. guide to gardening laid open on the bench. I don't think they need a guide at this point. What are Graham Grams? Hey Graham, I'm gonna go. Uh, 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 For Pete's sake, uh, 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 go change out of your pajamas before you say another word. But uh, 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 for nothing. Inside clothes are for inside. And outside clothes are for outside. Lucas stared at his feet and muttered under his breath. Mom always let me wear my pajamas in the garden. Uh, well, Eleanor isn't here, is she? I don't really like Gran. Now go upstairs, change, and then we'll talk. Right, of course. I forgot about the pajamas. Yeah, I'm not too keen on Gran. She's, I mean, like, shoot, the kid's mom disappeared. Like, give him, give him a break. I mean, I, I guess that's her daughter, but, you know, like, eh. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Mm. Even more little, uh, what, charms is what they said? Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. His tail moves. That's cute. Gran's bed was undisturbed. Oh, I didn't room. mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Okay, enter to jump. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. I mean, that's not really changing clothes. You're still in, in your pajamas. Friends moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Yeah, I'd be annoyed too, having a shared room, but you know, that's how it be. Alright, now let's go talk to Graham. Okay, I'm gonna go hang with Rolo for today. See you later. Like, it was never that serious. Hold up now. Where are you and Rolo headed exactly? Oh, nowhere special. The less grand new, the better for everyone involved. Yeah. We're just gonna go heart for the day? Pond oh. I would assume chill. Chill for the day. We're just gonna go chill for the day. That's neat. Lies are built on truth. You both are always in a hurry to do nothing. 
we stick to what we're good at. We'll make sure you're done chilling in time for supper. Easy. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. Oh, that okay. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think yeah. it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. Okay. Okay. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the uh -huh. turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Okay. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. Okay. Okay, so I'll pick, um... We were hide. just gonna go hide for the day. That sounds like a terrible lie. Hide. Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. Yeah, I guess we're gonna bet some other kids that we could beat them at hide and seek. Aren't you a little older for that? He's like 12, bruh. There's not just much else to do around here. Make sure you boys are done playing your little game in time for supper. All swell, but unswell. Alright, let me try it again. Let's do the um other one. Let's do uh ponder. We were just gonna go That's even ponder worse. for the day. Nah, that's just like alright line. Who doesn't go ponder for the day? I really, what are you boys gonna ponder on? On such a lovely day, exactly. This was Lucas' chance to sell his alibi. Um, you know, big stuff, small stuff, medium, mostly medium pondering. Nailed it. Well, make sure you don't overburn yourselves with the preponderance of pondering, huh? Oh, forget it. I'll put you know. Ah, I mean, I guess, I guess she's alright. I mean, I don't know. Oh, and Luca. You and Rello stay out of trouble. I know, I know. Tch. Kids be kids? Oh, yeah, um... Uh... Now I'm gonna keep my... Whatever. Come on, come on. Woo! Dang it, Rollo. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. At least you can know where it's at. You know the drill. Don't let anyone discover a secret path. You have earned fur, you literally stand out. Chapter 2 Welcome to Beacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon hmm. Pines was a stop. Over the next 30 Oops. years, the town had grown and prospered until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. Well, let's talk to some strangers. Hey, Mr. Kerr. Hey there, pal. William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. Is he a, what do you call it, a, a, a dingo? He had become a fixture around town over the past hmm. few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. Excited for the big festival? Oh, I'm sure. Come on now, when I was your age, there's nothing more exciting than a town festival. The food, the music, the dancing. Sounds pretty all right. You're gosh dang right it is. I'm looking forward to letting off some steam myself. Make sure to invite all of your little friends. I couldn't keep Rello away if I tried. Excellent. Sorry, Luca. I've got to get back to the proverbial grindstone. Our harvest awaits and all that. Oh no. Left side's a little low. Sorry, young Mr. Van Horn. Can't talk now. Very busy with preparations. Mayor Augustus Valentine was not busy. Oh, sorry, Gus. How many times do I? It's Mayor Valent. Sigh. Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. Keep up the good work. I must briefly attend to a concerned citizen. 
Huh? There's nothing. Keep at it. That orange uh, cat that looked like um Rolo's dad. <laughs> All right. What can a mayor of Bacon Pines do for you today? Beacon. Oh, I just said hi. I guess. <laughs> well, good day to you too, young Mr. Van Horn. Why is he such a stickler for? Oh well. Okay. Am I gonna get like a little a thing for doing this? Let's see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nothing. A little pig. Asleep. Hey, Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was. A tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. Yahoo, Mr. Sinclair. Bah, don't you see I'm sleeping, boy? How's the napping today? Crummy as always. You used to have a perfectly nice view from here. Till perennial harvest put that monstrosity of a building in the way. Why don't, you, why don't you just move your chair a bit? Why should I be the one that moves? If it's a showdown they want, I ain't gonna be the one who blinks. You should to the oinks. It would've been funny. I right, know. Come on, Andy. Grab his wallet. Oh, boy. I'm sorry, Iggy. I can't. Do it over a pound you. Yup. Yeah, but my mom said. Yeah, but, yeah, but. If I had a nickel for every yeah, but, I'd be the freaking king of nickels. Ain't that right, Tish? Yup. Oh, they're bullies. That's crazy. Mr. Van Horn, do you have a moment? Is this Luca? Golly, I'm sorry. It's my first week at Perennial Harvest. I'm butchering that. He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. Wonderful. It won't happen again. If we're going to be on a first name basis, then you can call me Pete. Oh, nice to meet you, Pete. Sorry, what are you writing? Oh, just documenting. Gosh, it's exciting to be a part of something so darn special. You know, it's not just about new fountain fountains and phone booths. We're gonna change the world. And it all starts here in Beacon Pines. Isn't that amazing? Uh, huh. In a way, I'd better get... Oh, that reminds me. We'd love to hear your thoughts. My thoughts? You bet. If we want to change this town, we need to get every detail right. That sounds intense. Ha ha ha. Changing the world is intense. So what do y'all say? Could you answer a few questions? Well, I guess if it's quick. Wonderful. Open to answering a few quick questions. One down. See, it's not that hard, is it? Oh, okay. We're going already. Question two. What is something you love about Beacon Pines? I've never really thought about it before. Perfect. Bruh. It's the only place I've lived. See, that wasn't so painful. This guy's kind of annoying. Pete stopped scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard. Was it? Uh, I guess not. Huzzah. Our first few questions answered in record time. Are you literally writing down everything? Thank you so much for your time. I need to process these answers. We can save the rest of your thoughts for later. Okay. Our harvest awaits. Oh, this guy's kind of weird. All right. Well, I think that's everybody. Let's go to where Rolo said. Old Pickler's Pond. Everybody knows where this is at. Hey, Jetson. Is the lion playing any tunes today? No bites this morning, I'm afraid. Come to think of it. I can't remember the last time I wrote one in. But hey, it was never about the catch. This is what I come to think. Yeah, that's what my dad used to do here. That reminds me. If you ever want his chair back, I've taken a standing recently. It keeps me from falling asleep at the rail. If you don't mind, I think it should stay. Not at all. An empty chair makes for a great listener. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. And not catch anything, probably. Bruh, look how cute this- Oh, he, his little horns are short, too. And he has horns. Ah! Go pick out your bait from the tackle box, buckaroo. 
That's that's Luca cute. opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Uh. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. Mm. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? Give it a good cast now. I don't think shoestring was the right answer. But tickle didn't make sense either. You have to reel it in a bit faster. Your catch will lose interest. Heh. Go pick up your bait from the tackle. Oh. Luca Let's try shoestring shoe again. Fish could resist and we'll see what they give us. Am I doing it right? Oh, I see. You know, I've always hated fishing mechanics in video games. Because they were, they were never fun. Oh, yeah. Trash. What do you think the other one is? Hard to say. Sometimes things drift away. That's not fair. No, it's not. Well, whatever it is. I hope that other boot at least has a sock to keep it company. Alright, let's see what the Luther tickle... Luther gently baited a feather onto the hook. Good for skimming the surface. Alright, let's try that. Let's see what we catch. I duck. Well, I will be switched. It's your old rubber ducky. You were just a little drooling ball of fur when you lost that. Cried for days. I told you I'd turn up. Heh <laughs> heh. Yeah, like seven years later. Luca tied a shot fish could res Can I catch another shoestring? I mean another uh boot, the other pair. Uh oh, I just reset it. Okay. Looks like we can use some new bait. What do you say we head out and find some more? Okay. I how do I get new bait? Just leave? This is Oh. Keep out. Okay. Let's... Okay. Mm-hmm. That's cute. After Luca's father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Star Scraper. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. Oh. He ain't too bad. On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Rolo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. <laughs> Luca's winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. Okay, what's this top secret plan to start our summer? So you know the abandoned warehouse in my place? The old Valentine building? Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night it was glowing. Glowing, are you sure? Kinda. Hmm, the place has been empty since. Since the foul harvest? Yeah. Who'd even want to poke around in that place? We would, Rolo. We would. Wait, wait, wait. Is this a busted old warehouse? I just meant we could do some research in the library. You actually want to go into the warehouse? What do you expect to find? Answers? My mom's out there somewhere. And it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Luca, remember that time I sort of accidentally bur burned down the chicken coop? And you jumped in and said it was your fault before my paw throttled me? This is a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. I've got your back. Thanks, Rolo. Now that I think about it, poking around at the crypt fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I want to spend the first day of summer. Let's go. Alright, oops. I love how no one gives me directions to anything. I'm gonna assume it's... What if it's this way? Oh, there he is. I'm just catching my breath a bit. Go on, I'll catch up. Why'd you run? Okay. Hey, Mrs. Nelson. Morning, Luca. Any big plans for the summer? Not really. 
heard anything about the old fertilizer warehouse? Any uh, strange happenings? Can't say I have. Either way, a dusty old warehouse is no place for a young boy. You be safe now. Miss Hatch could often be found near the fountain. She's alligator? Too absorbed in a book to be distracted. The two wandered down the wooded path, unaware of the danger ahead. Oh. Oh, this is getting good. Oh, so of course, shadowing. Can I go in here? No. Fulton Wilder ran the local paper of record. It looks kind of sketch. The beacon, beacon. Of course. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Morning, Luca. What's the day have in store for you? I was wondering if you heard any news about news. The beacon, beacon knows the news that needs knowing. Any news about the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Rolo thought he saw some lights there last night. Hmm. Rolo ought to be careful poking around that part of town. The winds of change are blowing, and change is a dangerous animal. Oh, neat. I got a uh, thing. What, a charm? A squirrel and a... <laughs> Luca, this is the fellow I was looking for. Now, they look related. Luca, um, um this cat thing and Rolo. Hey, Roxy. Oh, What's right. up? Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. Oh, and boy. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear. We can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now mm. I'm just rambling. Where were we? Have you seen my blockhead brother today? He skipped up before breakfast. Well, not really, no. Can't say I have. Can't say or won't say. Roxy, would I lie to you? Mm. <laughs> Luca, wait up. I want you to tell you. Roxy might be lurking around here. This is one of her favorite places to send around and be useless. Rolo? Do we need to make sure she doesn't spot us? Rolo? Why are you doing that tiny thing with your body? What? You're not scared, are you? She's harmless. And a chump. And she's right around the corner, isn't she? Yeah. The mommy just over here lurking uselessly. Oh, hey, sis. Nice weather we're having, eh? I couldn't help but notice you snuck out this morning before breakfast. Was it hungry? Also, can I help you notice? Can I help but notice your morning chores were left unshored? Roxy, I'm gonna level with you. I'm sick and tired of digging up carrots. We all gotta pick up the slack since the foul harvest. Almost every carrot I dig up is rotten, and the rest will out there are hit with Hank Atomic's shrinkle ray. All them reason to keep on digging. There's gotta be more to life than puny carrots. Look, Roxy, Luca and I have places to be, so if you don't mind, oh, I do mind. I'm not gonna catch hell again because of you. So either you march yourself home and harvest those carrots, or I'll haul you home myself. Rollo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Uh, Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. In the past, he found the best way to deal with her, and rage Roxy was to be a little chill. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Come on, Roxy. It's the first day of summer. The sun's shining and we just want to take it easy. Let's leave tomorrow's problem for tomorrow. That's great and all, but Rolo's problems have a way of becoming my problems. And Pa always said, tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. Uh... March, you big oaf. Oh rats. I for the full report about the Valentine place. A full report. Oh yeah. So Fitz, what are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Cool, cool, cool. Figured. Hey Solomon. Apologies, no time for chit chat. Looks like the library hasn't opened yet. I'll check back later. 
look up my boy hold up a tick oh hey mr nuncreed i was just on my way to i just sell the last jar of your grandmother's preserves can't stock the shelves fast enough turns out hey that's great but i'm actually i guess juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely gem uh-huh well don't let this old man slow you down you just remind her that she still owes me that dance. A promise Gran regretted uh, the second it was made. Will do. She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Uh, yeah, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. A, hey, uh, uh, gotta go. Hey, sweeter than any gem on earth. Hey, this this guy's kind of weird, right? Right, kind of. Kinda... The phone booth was brand new. Mm. Part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. Nah, this is kind of creepy. Oh, hey, Luga. Hey, Joey. How's the bug hunt going? Not great. Bugs have been shy this week. Bugs get shy. Oh, sure. Bugs aren't that different from people. Sometimes they just want to be left alone. If you're going into weep wood, just be careful where you step. No bug crunching. Got it. I assume this is Weepwood. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. I assume this is a factory? Okay, no turning back now. Caution, electrified fence. Is that a sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Okay, so what would Rolla do if he was here? Luca often asked himself what Rolla would do. So that he could rule out that option. <laughs> I'm definitely not touching that thing. Smart. You just like fit under it. You know what? I'm gonna touch it. Just because I can, right? As sparks flew oh. from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Huh. So I should just like Oh. That's One two. more to go. What a cheap fence. I'm literally just chucking like Mushrooms at it and it's kicking off. That's crazy. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. That's got to be the worst sentence in existence. Okay, moment of truth. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. Okay, so Rella wasn't exactly exaggerating for once. What's going on there here? There's only one way to find out. Yeah, I'm just sneaking to an abandoned building. Wow, that smells awful. Too bad Rella's not here. He'd have no problem poking around in there. Well, you know their friends. emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. Looks like water. The water looked almost diseased. Never it mind. It flowed slowly into the woods. It's probably like waste. Luca Lunch. thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. A zipper. The sound steps. of footsteps grew louder. Time to dip. Hello? Oh, it's a waste thingy. Good. <laughs> the heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. That's crazy. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. That's crazy. Kidnapping a kid. This is a story about change. This is a story about change. It was huh. far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. Oh, yeah. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. Nah, no way, I did There die. are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage uh, you. 
We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning hmm. point. Now, let's try something different. Okay. So I should go back here. Okay, now I'm getting it. Okay. In the past, he go. found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Make a break for it. What have you done? Uh, did that little shit just kick me? Run all you want, you little twerps. You gotta come home eventually. Sorry. Huh. Sorry about that. Roll can get overexcited sometimes. Solomon Valentine. Current ward of and future successor to the Valentine Fortune. Of course. Huffed as he brushed off his pants. A town of complete and utter fools. One wonders if it's worth taking anything here seriously. This guy sucks. Either way, I'm really sorry. No matter how are you doing, me. Yeah, with all the business about your mother and whatnot. Oh, I'm getting by. Still no word from her at all? No. That is truly a shame. Huh. Your grandmother has taken residence to keep house? Yeah. And how's that going? We mostly stay out of each other's way. You make it sound like she's rarely at home. It's not like that. She just has a lot to do. Mm-hmm. She's still settling in and trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Indeed. Well, count your blessings. It's better to have a caretaker who is really around in lieu of one who tries to compensate by smothering you with attention. That doesn't sound so bad. Trust me when I say it's best to align yourself. Family has a way of creating more problems than they solve. Oh, is that his little caretaker? A little dog thing? Solomon, Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. Speak of the devil. Uh, Do not wander off like that. Oh, what's, what's the name of that dog breed that looks like that? Can't remember. I'm much too busy to be looking all over for you. Apologies, Eris. I was just taking a stroll through town. Strolls are for commoners. Man, bros, lady. You're in Valentine now. I want you to be present for the construction of the History Museum. The future of this town relies on its ability to remember our family's great past. Of course. Huh. I'm miserable. Does he have anything else to say? Probably not, right? Okay. So he didn't say that grandma thing. Sigh. Boy's got too much of his father in him. Oh, no talking to a little bear thing. I win. Mm -hmm. Little help. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. am the champion. We were racing. Mm -hmm. Did that road get longer? Like anything ever changes around mm -hmm. here. It seemed longer. You're just lightheaded from the run. You really need to pace yourself better next time. I'm not sure why I would take advice from second place. I got you there. Has that sign always been there? Wait, what? Caution, electrified fence. No, that's definitely new. Creepy. Alright, we're gonna get around an electric fence. Don't worry, I've got this. Watch him touch it. Knew it. Why did you do that? Paul always said you can figure out what the plan was when you're done. Great. What now? Well, I did my part and established that touching the fence is bad. I'm sure you can handle it from here. I'll supervise. From a safe distance. And now I uh, throw those little flower, flower things. Oops. Well, you're a genius. I think that did it. Luca, 
He never failed to impress. As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rolo began to bounce excitedly. Check it out. Dang, Rolo, you weren't exaggerating for once. Was there any ever any doubt? This definitely needs investigating. Good thing two ace detectives are on the case. This is bizarre. This is awesome. Rumble. Oh, I'm just picking up charms. Did you feel that? What, the excitement in the air? You bet your butt I did. Just check out this puddle. That's not normal. And this hose. Oh man, the door is locked. Try harder. No dice, it won't budge. Oh well. This dumpster is new, right? I bet it's got stuff in it. I can't really see what's in here. Who did all of this? My nose is itching. I think I smell some treasure. Are you sure that isn't the hazardous waste? This helped me get in. Rolo. It'd be my honor to throw you in the trash. Ew. Come on, Lady Luck. So what's in there? Let's see. There's a squishy bag of squish. Wow. A good inch of stagnant sludge. Your natural habitat. Wait. Hold the phone. Hold two phones. Check these bad boys out. Are those walkie talkies? Just like Hank Atomic Communicators. Do these actually work? Ground Command to Hank Atomic. Do you read me, Hank? This is Hank Atomic Ground Command. You're coming in five by five. How, um, how are your vital readouts, Hank? It's getting a little stuffy in here. Requesting assistance for evac. Help is on the way. What was that? Someone's coming. Give me your hand. I'm trying. My hands are covered in squish. Scoot over. I'm coming in. Hmm. Is he gonna dump sludge in him? Uh, tell me you saw that. Dude, I don't know what I saw. He's coming back. Get down. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Don't tell me that's their mom. His mom, right? Nah, that'd be too obvious. Nah. Is it sat petrified under the weight of the bag. Oh, God. Tell me that's not what I think it is. Look, uh, do you know what separates run the mill detectives from ace detectives? A ridiculous hat. When the chips are down, ace detectives dig deeper for clues. Both felt around at the large sack which burdened them. Don't tell me it's gonna be small. Nah, come on. Uh -huh. He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. It's some sort of badge or something. What? What's Both it say? the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Dr. Prescott, Deep Engineering. It's a name tag. Who would throw away a bag full of slimy old name tags? It's a body. I think it's this one name tag and a bag full of something else. Okay, okay, okay. I think we should make a break for it. Stay calm. This is no time to panic. I'm not panicking. You're panicking. Rolo, calm down. You don't have to squeeze my hand so hard. Dude, I'm not holding your hand. Been messing around. While this slime covered hand will be in here. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not screaming, guys, in the mic. I'm beginning to see the benefits of your of your run for our lives plan. Right. We're clearly established that I'm faster than you, so I'll go first. Why not go together? Let me check Koop, Luca. Make sure the coast is clear. After I go, count to 100. If you hear me yell, run. If you don't hear me yell, run. Actually, either way, haul ass. But look, I'll give you credit. You sure find a bit more way to start our summer. It's what I do. Well, here goes nothing. Lucas sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rolo's footsteps as he ran. 
One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rolo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen? Sixteen? Yeah, I would have gotten out by then. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five? Thirty-six? Thirty-seven? The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough! Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass! Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Yeah, personally me, I would have taken a shower. Like, no way I'm sitting in the dumpster for minutes with a dead body on top of me. Could it be me? Chapter 3 Finding a friend. All right, guys. I think I'm gonna end this here. Um, but this is a cute little story. I have to agree. Um, you know, turn dark, you know, relatively quickly, and I think it fits the theme of Halloween. So, as always, I will catch you on the flip side. <laughs>